Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Sundays with the Sprinkles. I'm Brett Sprinkle, joined by me, as always, Tyler Sprinkle, Brandon Shanahan, and Brandon Shanahan's cat. Hello, boys. Happy 420. How are we doing? Good, man. I mean, uh, I mean, not because of 420. I don't celebrate Hitler's birthday like that, but. Mm-hmm. I mean, you literally just said you did. That's why I thought we were saying happy 420. What What else happens on 420? Well, it's also the anniversary of the Columbine shooting. I also don't celebrate that either, but I, I suppose oh, okay. some people do. I've been seeing a lot of 420 club. <laughs> Brandon wearing the Denver Nuggets hoodie. The re- the repeat tour starts today. Excited it for is. that. I'm juiced. I, Ash. I, what? It's a great time to be alive. Pass, pass on what? Out. On basketball. Pass. Yeah, you just pass on having fun. Pass on just being fun, a fun person. I mean, you guys can talk about it. I'll just watch. I'll continue watching the Mets game. Just make sure you say my name when I'm to come back in. It's like, is it you want to watch Drew Smith walk everybody for another inning? No, it's fine. We're up still. It's basically what he did. Wham, yeah, wham, Mets wham, are at five four, top of the seventh right now. Why wham? Like, why can't I be frustrated that he walked fucking like everybody? Just let the game play out. The game did play out, and he walked everybody. They're still winning. Yeah. It's fine. But uh, I think last time we were together on this podcast, the Mets were not doing so hot, or at least they were starting to get hot. Well, it turns out they're completely in fuego right now, currently on a five-game winning streak. Turns out there's not there's not only five games in the baseball season. Who would have thought? If there were, though, the Mets would be undefeated. So That's true. Or winless, I guess, technically, in that span. No. no. Brett, I got More a question recent. for you. Yes. I, outside of, uh, of the Mets, but still kind of baseball related. What's your favorite kind of baseball game to, to call? Like, what is what is like the perfect broadcast call sound like for you? For what do you, like? What do you mean? So like, I had a game that ended in five runs through the mercy rule. It was a, a, a 10, 10 nil game. Um, the other side got shut out, and it was like an hour and a half. And I was like, this is this is awesome. I am I'm mm-hmm. really happy with this. Um, also like. Yeah, I mean, any close games are better. You know, the quicker, quicker the better. I love, love a good pitcher's duel. Um, so just any preferences along those lines. What does a good good game look like for you? I love a good pitcher's duel because, you know, as a former pitcher, I just I love watching good pitching. I fucking can't stand it when these college pitchers just walk everybody. It's It fucking frustrates the shit out of me. Um, also love it when it's a cl- – yeah, I do love it when it's a close game because that's actually one thing I think that I excel at and I just keep continue to improve at is crunch time. And um, I'm kind of picking, I kind of picked it up from my coworker, Brian McSweeney. Uh, it's just, that's just my favorite part. I'm starting to get really good at it. It's just when you lock in, basically all the narratives that you've been building up all game kind of matter right here. Uh, and you just like, you're the weird sentences are a lot sharper. You're describing everything that's happening in the ballpark. Every single pitch is pal- like the, the intensity is palpable and you're the one guiding all of that. That's my favorite part. That's, that's what I love about broadcasting right now. I feel like I'm getting really good at it. And I feel like uh, it's, it gets, it gets me going. It gets me juiced. It really does. That's so sick. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just got done calling a softball double header. George Mason has not had the best team or best season. Soft, as a softball team this year after winning the A-10 tournament last season. Um, they dropped one out of two games to St. Louis in their doubleheader today. But we're not here to talk about George Mason softball or Atlantic 10 softball. We're here to talk about the NFL draft, right? Am I right, boys? Oh, man. Yes. I, I brought my George Mason softball notes. I bet, yeah, we can move on. We can move on. Yeah, I know you have your, your agenda. So, we'll... uh, so I'm not going to lie. I'm excited for the first round of the draft. We, I get to watch the first round and be excited about it for the first time ever. And it seems like 10 years because the Broncos just haven't had a first round pick or a second round pick for that matter. Um, how, what are you guys' thoughts and feelings as we come up on Thursday? Well, I am going to be in Denver, so that should be fun. Hopefully I can find a bar to go to and uh, watch it. So, Why don't you just go to the fan it, zone? Watch it with all the fans. I, yeah, I guess I didn't even think about that. I could You're certainly do that. Mm-hmm. What about you, Brandon? How are you feeling? Um, so it, it's not just that I'm not very dialed into to what's going on here. Because I, I think if I, the more I learn about the draft and the prospects, the more upset 
um, I'll be when the Broncos do ultimately make their selection. Also pair that with the fact that I haven't given any care since the, the what was that, the 2021 draft when they drafted Sertan. Um, I mean, since then, I there's been no interest in the, in the first round of the draft. No, so yeah. I, it's, I think it, it compounds and now it's just like, I, I'm not going to be happy if I learn more than I do now. Yeah, it's definitely smokescreen season uh, within the span of, like, I want to say almost an hour. I saw one, I got one notification on my phone that's, that was George Payton saying, yeah, the Broncos don't want to pay King's ransom. They don't want to, you know, you know, reach on anybody. They don't want to make any rash decisions. They're willing to take it, the draft as it comes. And then literally like an hour later, I saw an, it's, I saw a notification saying Sean Payton willing to trade the farm for his prospects. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't even think the Broncos know what's going to happen, but we'll see. It's going to be an exciting just, day for sure. It's all a bunch of smoke and mirrors. Um, trying to get people to bite um, to make them fuck up because they think that you're going to do the same. Um, it's all just a bunch of bullshit. N- nothing anybody says is real. So just I wouldn't even talk about it. I also saw today that Jaden Daniels, after meeting with the commanders, he's eyeing the Vikings and Raiders as his teams. He doesn't want to go to the commanders anymore, which is funny. Did you guys see that so, headline today? Yeah. I did not. Yeah. I, well, I, I saw that he was yeah leaning towards, or I guess a, away from the commanders, which is which is interesting. I don't know what. Because out of those three teams, I – I mean, I guess the Vikings have Justin Jefferson. That's that's tough to be and Jordan Addison. But the Commanders are in a pretty good spot. Like, if I'm looking at teams who can, or like, like if Jaden Daniels is as special as as he can be, I mean, why can't they make a a push like the Texans did this year with all the cap space and the capital that they have? Seems like a good spot to be in. Yeah, but the facilities suck ass for the Commanders. That's true. I wouldn't want to go there either. That's true. That's a tough sell. Well, I mean, you can sell them on. It's going to improve. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah but It'll it's just better. right now it's a work in progress. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. That's did you hear point. what the commanders did with the quarterback prospects, by the way? They brought them all in, right? Yeah, they invited the top 20 quarterback prospects in the draft and took them all to Top Golf. So I just got to hang out. That's just so bizarre to me. It's like, why are you inviting the top 20? That's basically my job. Just take what? people to Top Golf. <laughs> That that Good is life. crazy. I I mean I, I I like the concept of like you get these guys into a more comfortable situation and where they let their guard down a little bit. They're out competing, but yeah, twenty quarterbacks because you only get so many draft visits and you're burning twenty of them on <laughs> nineteen guys that you're one hundred percent not taking. Absolutely preposterous. So I'm reading through this seven round mock draft right now. Written by Chad Reuter of NFL Network. He's their draft analyst. I don't never I've never heard of him. Caleb Williams, number one. Are we in consensus there? Or do we agree? Yeah. Yeah. Caleb Williams, definitely number one. Mm-hmm. Um, who's gonna be the second guys, quarterback? He does paint his nails. Are we sure that he's able to That's the he, dumbest he has, fucking shit has, I've ever He wore a, a weird outfit one time for a photo shoot. Are we sure that he could be a quarterback? He has I, mean, a I know we have two years, years of, two and a half years yeah. of film, man. You're forgetting the pink phone case, Brandon. You're forgetting the pink phone the case. Phone... He has a phone case. It's pink. It's pink. His phone case. Boy, pink. What a disaster! Incoming for the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> I wear pink a lot, and I'm not the starting quarterback of the Bears, so maybe that says something. Well, that's. I mean, maybe if mm-hmm. you put up the the pink shit, you know, then maybe it'll give you a call. That's true. Yeah, it's, that's what they're looking for in a quarterback. It's not arm talent. It's if you were pink or not. Yeah. I mean, seeing the Bears quarterback play throughout the entire history of their franchise, it makes sense. Yeah. Who's the second quarterback comes off? Jaden Daniels or Drake May? I always have liked Drake May, so I would say Drake May. Okay. But um sounds like they're leaning more toward Jaden Daniels. But if he doesn't the Vikings, leader, then I would say you take a or a Drake May. Vikings are a serious contender to trade up, and I know they really like Drake May. Yeah, I, it, it seems like what well, with Drake May, were I feel like a lot of folks are overthinking it. Like he's been like the consensus number two guy for basically his whole 
I mean, since we've got to see him play at a high level, and that I feel like there's some fatigue with it. Where I was like, well, I mean, Jaden Daniels kind of came on the scene, won a Heisman Trophy. But, yeah, I think Drake May is definitely – I would feel a lot better with Drake May as my quarterback. Um, also, Jaden Daniels has the funniest highlight tape of him just getting obliterated for no reason. Um, probably not a great trait for an NFL starting quarterback. Um he but yeah, it'll be interesting to see like how that actually does play out because I don't, I'm not sure that it will be Drake May. Just shows you how strong he is. Mm-hmm. Yes. So this mock draft that I'm looking at has a quarterback coming off the board with the first four picks, going Jaden yeah. Daniels, Drake May, number three, and then it has the Giants trading up for JJ McCarthy at pick four, trading with the Cardinals. Yeah. Everyone's high on JJ McCarthy. I don't see it. I'm not. I am by no means a quarterback scout. So if all these smart people are telling me that JJ McCarthy is a top quarterback prospect, I guess I have to believe them because they were spot on with Brock Osweiler and Paxton Lynch. So, yeah, yeah. What worries me is is when he started to get this the, this momentum. It, it's not. It doesn't have anything to do with you know the two years that he played football at a high level. It was. You know, right around combine season, it was when he was throwing on air. Like that's, if that's like the the has the most weight to your draft stock, I'm not excited. Again, I'm 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 trying not to get too too hard, too high on any of these guys, or too low on any of them, just in case they end up in in Denver. But um, I I don't know, as a fourth overall pick would be crazy. No, you're spot on because during combine season, I would every single incomplete pass he would throw during the combine, he like his stock went up. It was th- the most bizarre shit I've ever seen in my life. And I had gotten to a point where I talked to myself, okay, the Broncos are going to take him at 12, whatever it is, what it is. And then all of a sudden, he's the fourth best quarter. He's going to be taken in the top five. And that's preposterous. I wouldn't trade up for that guy. If, you're, if he's there at 12, take him. But I wouldn't trade up for him because you have to give up so much to get in the top five. It's going to be insane. Tyler, I got a. Uh... A, a finance question for you. So how okay. how deep in the trenches are you in like evaluating like trends? Well, it depends. What are you talking about? Well, because I, I guess because I, I saw a video today where somebody pointed out how frequently three quarterbacks get taken off the board. One, two, three. And it's starting to be a trend where it's happening more and more frequently. So I just didn't know if that was something that you worked with on a on a professional level. I mean, not with quarterbacks or the draft. Um, there are certain trends that you you pay attention to as a financial professional, but uh, um, I mean, I'm not doing the research. That's why I have a company to back me up and uh, to me to make my own opinions on those. So. Interesting. Yeah. Is that something you saw, Brandon? Did you look into it? Is is it really quarterbacks one, two, three? How often has it happened? Um, so I think like four times total, but like three have been in the last, you know, 15 or 20 years. And I okay. think, oh boy, I'm trying to remember all the instances, but one was like Arch Manning's draft. So that was like a trillion years ago. Um, wait, that that's the dad's name, right? Arch? Cooper? The one who played for the Saints? No, not the, the, the Oh, dad. Archie? Grandpa? Archie Manning? Yeah. Yeah. What about okay, him? So they just okay. I was like, I, I I hope it would sound really dumb if I just named the college kid if he mm-hmm. didn't have the same name. But um, so that was like the first time. And then it happened with um, Justin Fields. Trevor, not Justin Fields. He wasn't top three, but that Trevor Lawrence draft, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then like one other time between like here in the most recent times. But it, it's something that's becoming more and more prevalent as the quarterback is is becoming more important, and it almost never works out for no, most of the teams. I mean, take a look at it this way. I this is I mean, this is not a direct one for one analogy, but it's one I think people understand. Is I'm training to be a professional broadcaster. I'm working in college to be a broadcaster. I'm broadcasting in college. What they're expecting out of 22, 21 year old quarterbacks is to come in and be ready to call essentially call the Super Bowl, right? And be ready to call a playoff, NFL playoff game. You'll be at the top of your, you know, highest level, just be 100% ready to go in your profession. 
That's not how 99% of professions work. That's not what you do. You come in and you learn. You come in and you learn on the job. You try to figure it out. But now we're in this era where if you're not if you're not the best as soon as you get in the league, you're, ta- you're cast aside and you're the worst quarterback in the world. You're a bust. You're all these things. And it ruins the, the psyche and it ruins the confidence of a lot of young quarterbacks. A lot of people can't handle it. Yeah, and, and I just looked it up. 1971, so that was Arch Manning's draft. 1999. Uh, than 2021 and it's never happened where it's been one two three four like it is now mm. so it it seems yeah it seems like folks are, are reaching at it at an absolute premium teams are desperate to get their guy sticking with this one mock draft the first non-quarterback okay francisco i'm so stoked dude his home run yesterday got me so fucking hype is he um He's he's back. He's big back. Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Chargers at five. Mm -hmm. That's a really good pick by them. I think the Chargers are going to be good, guys. I think they're just going to be good. Yeah, but they're still the the Chargers. I did hear a story that um, John Arbaugh. They were trying to trade Justin Herbert to the Vikings, or they were talking about it. That'd be sick. That'd be stupid. Well, I mean, sick for me. That stupid. Yeah, thing. but I mean, if you're going to trade him to anybody, trade him to the Broncos. What's going on with FIBA and Phoebe and Willa? Uh, uh, Burn the program just got here. Who? If it's Brooke, Brooke I'm going to be pissed. It is Brooke. He got a little sunburn. Oh, little boy got a sunburn. He's Was he a fan of the, the Chiefs? Use. Yeah. I don't care what he has to say then. It's going to ask him what he thinks the Chiefs are going to pick. Coaching the youths, you know, developing young men. We Brock all, Bowers we should at, all be so lucky. We should all be so lucky, whatever you say, dude. Mm-hmm. Brock Bowers at nine to the Colts is another pick that I like. I was kind of hoping he'd fall to the Broncos, but whatever. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? I'm Yeah, it'd be fine. Um you know, the more weapons you can get Anthony Richardson, the the better. I also saw a trend that's like pointed out how highly drafted tight ends almost never work out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vernon Davis. Kyle Pitts. Pitts. Kyle, Kyle Pitts. Oh, Kyle, is so good. Kyle good Pitts point. stinks. TJ Hawkins. Well, he no, he's back. Mm-hmm. He's back. Big back. Yeah, no big offense. back. He's kind of stinks. That's not his um, Ooh, this is interesting. This draft mock draft has Bo Nix going to the Vikings at 11 and has the Broncos taking Dallas Turner, the edge rusher, out of Alabama with the 12th pick. Yes. That's best case scenario. If Bo Nix is on the board, the Broncos are going to draft him and I'm going to fucking rip the re- whatever's left of my hair out. I'm not going to be able to handle it. Like, you guys are going to call me alopecia boy because I'm going to take off, off of... I'm going to just rip out my fucking... If we draft there. Bo Nix? If we draft Bo Nix. We don't need to draft Bo Nix in the first round. We need Dallas Turner in the first round. T- Bo Nix, draft him in the third round. I don't care. Well, draft Bo Nix. He's not in the first round. He's not going to be there. Of course he's not. He's that's like, oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Well, why, yeah, well, why would the Bears just draft Caleb Williams in the fourth round? He's the first round pick on someone else. <laughs> like, If you need a quarterback and Bo Nix is the best available quarterback, why yeah. would you take him? So, so your plan is even to mean? stick Nick, with... Who's better, Bo Nix or Nick Mullins? Bo Nix. What? How? How do you know? How do you know? I mean, there's, there's just so much more playing quarterback in the NFL for eight years. Christ. There's another guy who hasn't played a single snap of NFL football. I stand talking to you about sports. I can't stand it. Why? Because I argue with you. Because you get one you. thought in your fucking whatever. head. You get one thought in your fucking head, and it's anything else anybody says is stupid, and you're right. That's how it I didn't goes. say what you're saying was stupid. I was – exclaiming my points and just because you can't back your point up with facts mm. you're getting frustrated with me go ahead i'll give you the floor i'll mute myself go ahead no nick mullins is the best one coming from southern mississippi um he played like what 15 career games in the nfl he's done super super well um so yeah i definitely wouldn't take a chance on a younger guy um with a whole lot more upside and a cheaper contract um yeah yeah, I would go with Nick Mullins. You're right. Well, I mean, if you look at the history of the Denver Broncos, when when they go out and get veteran free agent quarterbacks, it always works out well, right? I, I guess I've kind of spaced it off the last, I don't know, decade of them trying that same strategy and it hasn't worked out one time. Peyton Manning. 
That's it. He was a free. That is it. I'm not saying I'm not saying Nick. I'm not saying the, any of these are good options. I'm just saying we have a first round pick for the first time in three years. You're going to use it on fucking Bo Nix. Take Dallas if Turner. They want. If that's who they want, I would rather them. I don't. I'm not a like a big big fan of any of the edge rushers coming out um, that early. So if we're going to take a defense, I would rather go with the the Toledo corner. Um, yeah, I'm not saying we have to draft a quarterback. I would like to draft a quarterback because I don't think I want to watch Jared Stidham play the whole season next year. Um, yeah. How would you feel about trading up to get a quarterback? I don't like that. Uh, because the it. only three that I would feel comfortable with trading up is Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Other than that, if you can't get in the top three, then there's no reason to trade up. Yeah. I'm right there with you. That to me feels like worst case scenario. I agree. And knowing I Sean Payton's history, that makes me very nervous. I just want to enjoy the first round. That's all I want. And I don't want to mortgage our future, like you said, trading up to the top three, you know, in the top three. But if we get one of those three guys, I'm in for it. If not, then yeah, do we really want to waste all that draft capital on JJ McCarthy, who by all means, all the scouts are saying he's excellent, but I just it's a lot to give up for that type of player. My other thing, Brett, is who's coming out next year that would be better than like Bonex or uh, Michael Penix, question. I suppose. I mean, like, how long, how much longer are we going to have to wait and be shitty without a quarterback before you decide, like, okay, yeah, just take a quarterback. It's fine. I mean, that's a good point. But why, why do other teams get to find quarterbacks in the fifth and sixth round and we can't? Because Russell Wilson ruined our season by winning six games in a row. That's why. Well, and that doesn't happen anymore because now all the, the quarterbacks who get taken in the fourth round get taken in the third round because all the quarterbacks that get taken in, uh, should be getting taken in the third round are now first-round picks. So it, uh, that, that doesn't happen anymore. Next year's quarterback class has Quinn Ewers, Shitter Sanders, Cam Ward, um, Riley Leonard, Jalen Daniels, Will Howard. So I already feel better about that class than where we would be drafting this year. People are high on Quinn Ears. I've not really – I don't see it. I think he's a good college quarterback. I just don't see it translating to the pros. But, again, not a quarterback scout. Don't really know what I'm talking about. I just I just call what I see. So, I don't really care about him either way. I know he's probably going to be a top five pick, Quinn Ears. But, I mean, Tyler, you're right. There's not a lot coming down the pipe. It's just – I don't know, man. This team just has so many new needs. Quarterback is one of them. So, if you're going to feel a need, might as well take one of those guys. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. I was just using Nick Mullins as an example of do you want an established veteran or do you want a rookie who – I'm just scarred by Paxton Lynch. I, Paxton Lynch ruined my life, essentially. I would – I mean, talking about Nick Mullins, I would rather trade for Trey Lance than to go the Nick Mullins route. Like a shitty older quarterback that the only reason you're getting him and think that he could be good is because he's been in the league for a little while. What yeah. if we just get Drew Brees out of retirement? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I also so I, I I kept scrolling through this list because I mean this is an insane list of of quarterbacks and, and draft prospects from twenty twenty five. Um, I just want to throw this out there: Cade McNamara, rated as the the seven hundred thirty fourth overall but, prospect in the in the twenty twenty five class. Jeff Sims, five ninety two. Just want to throw that out there. The worst quarterback I've ever seen is still. Uh, higher than the most talented quarterback who's played. Or I guess we game. could just uh, be really bad for like the next two years. Uh, so that way we can lock up Dylan Raiola. That'd be sick. Let's just lock it. him up. I haven't seen him what play in college, but I know he's going to be better. Or we draft a quarterback next year. By the time we realize he's a bust, then we draft Daniel Kalen. There you go. I, I think we figured out the Broncos' quarterback plan. Yeah, it, it, it sounds it sounds good to me. Honestly, so, I'm looking at the rest of this list. Go ahead, Tyler. They, I mean, scouts have said they have no idea what to look for in a quarterback. Like, what yeah. is a successful quarterback? So why not just fucking keep taking them? I mean, yeah, it fucking sucks. You just got to hit once, dude. Just yeah, one time and you're set for fucking 15 years, like the Chiefs are. I mean, that's what we want to do. Be the Chiefs. Be the Bills. I mean, just fucking take them. Who cares? 
I mean, you, yeah, that's, that's a solid point. You're making some good points. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just, I'm just expressing my frustration with fucking picking in the middle of the goddamn first round once again. We're just always in the middle of the first round. We'll never be in the top 10 when there's a good quarterback available. We'll be take a fucking Von Miller. We'll take a Patrick Sertan. We'll never be able to take a quarterback because we'll always be, we'll always be just outside of the quarterback range. I think we'll be in quarterback range next year. And guess what? Guess who was on the other side saying, oh, no, I love this winning streak that we're on. Knowing that it wouldn't last, knowing that it wouldn't lead to anything in the playoffs, but fuck up our draft position, that clown motherfucker right there. I don't. Where? Which one were you pointing at? Brandon? Me? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I was going to say, I thought I was super pumped to stoke about this winning streak, too. Dude, sometimes it just feels good to win six in a row, all right? And I get that, and I understand that, and I was happy that we were winning, but in the back of my mind, I was always like, well, fuck, here we go. If we don't play on Christmas, I think we're fine. That's that's a good point. We make the playoffs if we don't have a game on Christmas. Fact or fiction. But also, part of my optimism, what was it? It felt like at that time, now granted, he fumbled a lot, which was brought to my attention by, you know, fumble expert Tyler Sprinkle. Dude, he so fumbled credit, more credit once Tyler brought it to our attention. I swear to God, <laughs> he heard Tyler, and he's like, I'm going to drop the ball. I'm dropping the ball. I, it was two layers. The first layer, layer was, damn it, he fumbled the football. The second layer was, Tyler's fucking, he's Tyler's sitting there right this. now. Just, just But I, it felt to me like Russell Wilson was kind of turning into a, a, a good quarterback, a serviceable quarterback. And that was part of the optimism, as I did not think – at that point, the six-game winning streak, we beat the Chiefs, we beat the Bills, that we would cut him in the offseason. Who, we Russ? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's just unfortunate. It's a lot of money to eat. It's going to be tough. And, Tyler, to your point, and because of that, that's why I think we'll probably take a first-round quarterback. Um, just because you're right. The money the aspect is just going to be too good to pass up. I don't know. It just all sucks. I, I am excited for the first round. I do think we're, I, I, I know I'm going to walk away from the first round happy with whatever happens just because it's going to be new and it's going to be exciting and it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a lot of new stuff to figure out. But just right now, I'm just nervous for what's to come. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Um, but best case scenario is all those guys are gone by the time we pick. Then we're forced to take like a Michael Pratt in like the fifth or sixth round. Um, and hope that he turns out and then we'll be in the same position next year. Hopefully better, hopefully top 10 and uh, maybe get one of those shitty quarterbacks. Do the whole thing over again. Until Dylan can I ask Raiola you a question out. until Dylan Raiola comes out and I'm on board with Dylan Raiola. I saw that uh, announcement video it looks cool as shit. Can I ask you guys something? Not that I'm calling for it right now. I mean, I know we've talked about it in the past, but what does Sean Payton ha- or not Sean Payton? What does, George Payton have to do to get fired? Like, when does he get fired? Brandon, cover your ears, buddy. Okay. <laughs> I've been talking about his stupid ass getting fired for like two years now. Like, it should have happened after year one, honestly. That was just a, an abysmal year one into that trade. It's, so, it's not even the trade. It's not the trade because I've said you make that trade a hundred times. Yeah. You always make the trade. But just the mismanagement of the team. Um, throughout the years, it's been real bad. Um, yeah, give me somebody new, just like a new quarterback. I don't care if they're good. We're gonna fucking find out. Just keep cycling, cycling them in, and see what's going on. Do we just hire Bill Belichick to be our GM? Sure, I'll take it. Fuck give him it. a three-year contract. See what happens. You know what they say about all those Patriot teams? They're always so just talented. Oh, I oh, forgot. Yeah. Had Tom Brady. That's what yeah, no, this, I forgot. Brandon thinks can we get a quarterback can, like Tom Super Brady? Then, be won yeah, by then one we can, player. We can survive Bill Belichick, but God forbid. The other 52, the, the other, the other 52 spots on the roster don't really matter as long as you got that one guy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does a lot of heavy lifting for you. The Chiefs won that last Super Bowl with defense. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes, obviously the best player in the world, but if they don't have a good defense, they're not winning that game. I okay, okay, but also like, yeah, I, I we're, we're we're running in circles here. Yeah, 
True. Because you get to invest in your defense when you have a guy like Patrick Mahomes, who you don't you never have to worry about, and then you can go a little bit cheaper on offense because you know he's just going to elevate everybody. It's it, it's such a different world when you have a Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes. That well, and both of those guys never are... ever ever seen Bill Belichick succeed without. So. I guess. Well, he did get Mac Jones to his, to a Pro Bowl, so I, I guess that's there it. is that. Actually, is Trevor Lawrence available? Because the Jaguars traded for Mac Jones. It looks good down there in Jacksonville. He's home. Boy, yeah. I mean, to get Trevor, Trevor Lawrence out. Such a great eye. He drafted a backup <laughs> quarterback for the Jaguars in the first round. Traded up for him, if I'm not mistaken. That that was that, that was good. I would love that guy managing my football team. Okay. Trading up for a quarterback doesn't sound like Bill. It's Bill Belichick's mo. Could Kraft had something to do with that? <laughs> I'm just I'm putting out hypotheticals. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know either, but it, it, it's very cute that like when he blunders and it's oh, it's Robert Kraft who stepped in. I mean, Robert Kraft obviously hates Bill Belichick. Fucking can't stand the guy. I don't know if we saw That's that uh, Arthur Blank quote from the Falcons where Robert Kraft would have called him and said, yeah, it's never going to end well with Bill Belichick. Yeah. How many fucking relationships in professional like do end well, unless somebody's retiring, typically they're being forced out, forced to retire, pushed out. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's just the, the, the nature of doing business. Like, what do you mean? Jerry Petty Krause ass. won six championships in, in eight years and he's, it was vilified by the city of Chicago. <laughs> Brett, I want you to know that it's not, Drew Smith's fault. It's nobody can throw a single strike in this game. Just so you know that nobody. Can. No, it's the it's the Mets pitching staff, and I we do a great job of limiting runs, and I, I appreciate that. But it's just we walk so many people. We walk so many people. Well, Edwin Diaz is about to walk Shohei, and he's also down three zero um, on Freddie Freeman. So he's about to walk Shohei, or he already yeah, walked. He Shohei? already walked Shohei. Clearly, he's down three. So now he's down three zero on Freddie Freeman. Is I'm not watching the game. The game's on the bedroom. He's getting back in a form. Okay, Dude, yeah, hurt. Yeah. yeah, he's converted twenty six straight save opportunities. So oh, that's pretty. Sick. He's just his fastball sitting mid nineties right now, so he's still finding his form. That's good news. I like him. Yeah, just walked him. Hell yeah, brother! Is that the go ahead run at the plate now? Um, yep. that is yeah, yeah. Bases loaded, one out. Yep. Six four Mets. Teoscar Hernandez at the plate. Oh, buddy. That's a strike. Well, I'm not worried about that. Okay. Um, all right, Tyler, give me. I will right, we'll stick with first round, even though we're gonna break down rounds uh five and six at some point with you, uh, whenever you're ready. Give me your favorite prospect that's not a quarterback in the first round. That's gonna go be drafted in the first round. Brandon, you're next. I mean, with the way that people talk about Marvin Harrison Jr., it would be hard not to say him. Um, yeah, they're already saying he's generational. Um, but I really do like that corner out of Toledo. If not Marvin What's his Harrison, name? Uh, Quavion. I'm in. Already in. Love a good Quavion. That might be incorrect. I do think Broncos Twitter would have an absolute temper tantrum if we drafted him. Oh, they would be so fucking mad. Quinion Mitchell. So mad. Quinion. Quinion Mitchell. Yeah. Projected to go number eight to Atlanta. All right, Brandon, give me yours. Um, uh, One other one. Honorable mention. Oh, Jared Burst, I think um, just to shout out my boy, Brooke, um, the Florida State guy. National champs. Yeah. Cupcake. Who's the national champs? Bullshit. Uh, he's saying Florida State are national champions. Dude, did That's you crazy. see the, the ring that they came Them and out UCF. with? No, they didn't Florida get a State. ring. They, they got a ring. Which, Florida State got way, a ring? That's okay, lame okay, as okay, shit. Okay, Brooke, okay, okay, set, get Brooke on down. here. Get Brooke on set, here. Rings are so much more common than you than, 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 than people realize. Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure you get just a, a commemorative ring for each season, a bowl game. Uh, so for a, an undefeated season, you absolutely get a ring. Rings are so much more common than people understand. So then when a team like Florida State, who doesn't win the national championship, gets the ring, they throw temper tantrums about it. They're, they're common. But 
And then I'll, I'm immediately going to go shit on this ring that I just def- defended for the last 90 seconds. On the ring, it says unconquered, which mm. that's crazy. To have like 60 lose. points hung up on you in your last game. And then to say unconquered. Well, they kind of gave up. I, 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 I don't even count that last game. Okay, well then, well then, what are we, well then, what are you complaining about? They should get a ring. They're the national champions. They went undefeated. No, but that's the last game. I don't care about those bowl games. I care about the bowl games, the fucking college football playoffs. The way the system's set up right now, those bowl games just are shit because players are transferring out because they're not in the college football playoffs. They don't have all the spotlight and the the publicity on them, so they're just going to go start training for the draft and get ready that way. That makes sense to me. So fuck those games, but to say you're the national champions without making the national championship, that's insanity. I did see a Michigan got four rings um, the other day, so that's cool. Four? One for the national championship, one for the bowl game, Big the Rose Ten. Bowl, Big Ten championship. Big Ten West? Big Ten East? What's that all about? What's it doing? Struck, struck out both oh, wow. of them. Let's go. Oh, let's go. See, Tyler, yeah, that was that was a chance fourth? to do your call. That was, Tyler, that was a chance to get your call on. He struck him out. That's the end of the eighth inning. Yeah. Um, I would assume since he has so much rest, he's going uh, five out save, but we'll see. Yeah, he hasn't pitched in Fox since Tuesday, right? He's been going, he's been going like weeks at a time. <laughs> between pitches, Which is so. fine because I know they want to limit his innings, especially early on. You know, they want to bring him along slowly. Like I mentioned, he's only yeah. His fast was only in the mid nineties right now, which I'm completely fine with as long as he's ready to go by June and, or July and August, whenever we're twenty games and above five hundred. Yeah, sure. Um, Brandon, who is your favorite prospect? Not a quarterback in the first round. Yeah, I think this uh, this will be a very good, like a sneaky good wide receiver draft. I feel like we've had a couple of disappointing wide receiver drafts. Uh, lately that were kind of touted as, as more than they're uh, actually producing. So I feel like this will be kind of a uh, a good one for that. Um, Romeo Duze from Washington would, would be, if I had to name one guy, it would be him. Um, but yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. Is, will be so interesting to watch because the bar is so high that like he could, he could have 10 touchdowns and 1,100 yards in next year and he'd be like, we expect more out of them. All right. I like that. Brooks says uh, Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors, yeah. is He's the one from Texas, right? No. no. LSU. <laughs> LSU. Okay. He's going to be better than Martin Harrison. I think so, too. Um, I was talking with one of Sophia's cousins about um, he's just D-riding all over. Marvin Harrison Jr. Everybody is, though. and I said, "Yeah, I think he's going to be really good." Uh, but I think that this is a really good wide receiver draft. So um, I think I like Malik Neighbors more. I just really do. Are the Broncos going to trade Cortland Sutton? Um, I think the only way they do that is if they're trading up for something. So I don't believe so. I think his highest value is right now. Not saying you trade disagree. him. I think this is this is where you get his highest value. But I mean, then okay, we trade him away. We have Marvin Mims. I mean, I guess th- like I just said, th- it's a really deep draft, so we could definitely. Get That's what somebody. I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. I guess it would be sad to see him go because I do like Cortland Sutton um, quite a bit, but um, you got to when get he's healthy. Around. He's when he's healthy, he's been, he put he puts up numbers. He's a good wide receiver when he's healthy. And he had that one he had the ACL injury and he was still kind of hobbled last year because of it. And I mean those two seasons on the outside, you know, this most recent season and the season before his injury, he was great. And I'm drawing a mega blank. Um who the fuck is our third wide receiver? Uh he's been hurt the last two seasons. My god. Uh, oh, Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick. Tim, Tim Patrick. I want to say Tim Woods for some reason. Um yeah, D&D guy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. dude, that'd be insane. Guys, that'd be insane. <laughs> Just running around out there with a the fucking cape on. Two years, so. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know what you really do with him. I mean, thankfully he restructured his contract, so 
Um, it's a hell of a lot less because the moment he signed it, he went out and got hurt that like same day. I'm gonna assume. So, I think the moment um, he restructured it, he got hurt. <laughs> like I'm gonna say, like those two things happened back. Oh, well, that back. was two, two years ago. Back Surely back. he's played in a football game since. Nope. Uh, oh, negative. zero. Is you, are you are you just waking up from a coma? Sit down, buddy. Yeah, I got something that. to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it should happen. Though. I don't. I'm not blaming him for anything, but it just sucks. Um. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. Trade everybody. Trade Garrett. Trade Cortland. You see, and I'm fine with the trade everybody, but then don't draft a quarterback now. Because if you're and if I don't think we're gonna be... going to. I don't think we're right. going to. Like, I don't think we're going to have the chance to. Uh, yeah, hey, I like I said, if that mock draft pr- proves true, you have the first four quarterback, top five quarterbacks coming off of the first four picks, and then Bo Nix gone at eleven. Michael Penix, uh, people are saying he's a second round guy. He'll probably be drafted in the first round by a team that trades up for him. Um, like late, late, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and the then, Vikings um, are just as hungry as as we are to get a quarterback. Oh, they're so thirsty they're, as shit, dude. Yeah. yeah. So the top three quarterbacks are quarter or top three picks are quarterbacks, and then we're not going to be able to get ahead of Minnesota, most likely. Because whatever we could offer to move up, they could offer more and a better mm-hmm. better position. Yeah, so better slot. So there's going to be four quarterbacks taken unless somebody just gets the ick of one of these quarterbacks. And Ooh, or we find out that nobody went to one of their birthday parties. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, who went to JJ McCarthy's Draft birthday could, party? We could, <laughs> could change drastically if we get to get a specific <laughs> attendance list on a on an on an evening gathering. Tyler's muted or he's not talking to us. Brooke just really killed my mood. Um, he brought up the fact that Spencer Rattler does exist. And now I I'm forgot about that fucking. Guy. Is, is that, yeah, I, is no, I'm absolutely terrified. I, now forgot I, hope about we, that guy. I hope we trade up. We try to trade up to number two and just give them every single pick in our draft to get a quarterback not named Spencer. For the Rattler. next three years. No, what if we trade you know up to number two to take Spencer Rattler? Is, <laughs> is I'm talking all this shit, and he's going to be like comparable to Patrick Holmes in like five years just because I hate him. And he's then I'm going to be looking so stupid. Patrick Mahomes, if Patrick Mahomes wasn't the best quarterback in the entire fucking world, he'd be ugly. He is ugly. I think he's fine. He's fine now, but oh, when yeah, he's drafted, so he he's kind of ugly. Talks and you hear his voice. I, I think that knocks him down a, a peg. I think all the money has made him attractive because that's what money does, and then also success makes you attractive too, and that's just what it does. What if Spencer yeah. Rattler's just our savior? I've talked so much shit on Spencer Rattler. Spencer You're telling Rattler. me. You're fucking telling me. Dude, that would be so funny. I would be I in a your... blender. Well, I'd I be in a pretzel, I honestly. Kind of forgot about Shadur Sanders next year. I mean, I is he going to be an NFL quarterback though? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. He'll go. No, I'm not saying he's he's going to be a quarterback, but is he going to be a like? Is he going to be good? Is what I'm trying to say. Oh, is I don't anybody, know. Is anybody? He has a lot of talent. Good. He has well, a lot obviously. of talent, but people just say that he doesn't um, like his footwork isn't very good. So yeah. you have mm-hmm. to figure that out. Also, doesn't go but to if class. You can make, so. If you can make plays, though, then I mean. Some of that technical stuff kind of goes out the window if you can just mm-hmm. be that guy. So I, mean, I think home. I would. I think I would actually throw up if Sutter Sanders was our quarterback because I don't think it would go well. And then we have to deal with more Coach Prime nonsense. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I don't think it's good for anybody. I'd, I'd rather like draft like Kate McNamara next year and then just have him be like our practice squad backup quarterback. Why do you keep bringing him up? Like I would rather that. He loves him. Though. He loves him so much. It's his favorite fucking player. Well, I mean, I'm well, and that's assuming Jeff Sims is off the board because it, it seems like he's the higher rated quarterback. <laughs> <in> the... <laughs> oh, Tyler's beside himself. Uh, you guys didn't ask, but my favorite prospect, and this is how dumb my brain is. I play Madden. Um, you know, this year's most recent Madden, and then I you know download a draft class. And if I see a player that I like, I that's my guy. I don't care what happens. Dallas Turner is that guy for me. So seeing him in that mock draft, being drafted by the Broncos, that was very serendipitous for me. It felt good, felt right. And that's just my prospect. I have no other analysis besides that. I would be happy with Dallas Turner. The, the, he had, not he a had a lot of realistic opportunities for me to feel super stoked about where we're at in the draft. But I, I, I would 
I think I would feel most at ease with Dallas Turner. I agree. Actually, I don't agree. I don't really know what I think right now. There's a lot of emotions. Um, Brandon, as we digress, are we streaming the first round of the NFL draft? Do you want to do that? I think that should be the plan. I think that'd be sick. I think I'm available. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, I'm open Thursdays. Cool. I am too. I'll keep that. I'll make sure I won't pick up anything else. Tyler's going to be out I of might town. be able to like uh, zoom in or something for a little bit after the pick. but Okay. That'd be cool. I'm so, down. I don't want to commit to anything because I don't really know what's going to be going on. But tell Brooke we don't need him. We we don't. He's he's good. He can take the night off. We don't really. Okay, I'll let him know. <laughs> All right, so it's a plan. Brandon and I will be live streaming the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft live from where's it live from again? Detroit, right? Mm. D Town. I'm pretty sure it's Detroit. Yeah, you feel way more confident than any answer I would give out. So Detroit. So is... I remember seeing it say Detroit, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." Hmm. I don't know. Twenty twenty four NFL draft is in Campus Mark. Excuse me. Yep, Detroit, Michigan. Oh. I'm nice. Um. Well, we'll start to wrap it up here. What's up, Sophia? Have you guys been watching Fallout? Because I've finished with it. I finished it. I'm still only three episodes through. Mm, that's tough. It's really good. I like it a lot. Go ahead. Brandon, have you had a chance I to watch it? I started watching it, then my lady checked out when uh, when she saw someone get stabbed in the eye with a fork. Mm, it's pretty so, early on. Yeah. It was uh, a first, like, <laughs> like first 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty early on. Like, as soon as things started to hit the fan, there was a girl with a fork in her eye, and she's like, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I finished it, and it is one of the better series that I've seen in recent memory. Um, everything about it, dude. I mean, I mentioned it last episode, so I won't go too much into detail. But, yeah, the story and tell stay the same. There's a lot of the story arcs that happen throughout the first season. They're very, very good, and I recommend sticking with it if you're interested in the show. If not, then it doesn't really matter. We all like new different things. Um. Trying to think of what else I, mean, I want to talk Sunday about. Taylor Swift has a new album. She is a sprinkle. So that's, I guess, sprinkle. yeah. That's true. Um, but yeah, the, the Tortured Poets Department. Have you guys yeah. been streaming it? I've been listening to it a little bit here and there. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Taylor Swift's old songs, so I try to mix in some old with some new. Um, my thoughts? It's a Taylor Swift album. It sure is. Yeah, get ready to dump this. It. Whatever that means. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> and that was Sophia Sprinkle, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yep. Give it a round of applause. Good job. She got owned. Yeah. <laughs> so Tyler, t uh, Torture Poets Department, thoughts, concerns, Brooke? Um, I don't know anything about it. Mm. Um, I'm assuming this is Taylor Swift's new album. Mm -hmm. I'm I sure it's good. Correctly. Um, I don't know anything else. Dude, Switchies are gonna come after you, dude. You might be dead already. Not they might be fucking dragging your ass. I didn't say it was bad. I just don't know anything about it. It didn't it just come out. Can you give me a fucking month to listen to it? <laughs> it is 30 fucking songs. So yeah, you can yeah, take a month. It's, it's, it's 30? For sure. she, she released well, she, two albums. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she, she dropped like Holy the first 15 shit. at midnight. <laughs> and then at 2 a.m. she's like, hey, I know you guys have just li already listened to this whole thing. Here's another 15 songs. What Would it be crazy if I just dropped another 15 here? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, first few songs have been okay. Like I, it takes me for album any album, all, all of my favorite albums in the in, you know in history. Like one of the songs, like some that I consider, consider classic. I didn't like the first plate. I didn't like the first listen through. So it takes a couple times. You know, it just takes a couple yeah. listens for me to really understand it. Yeah, I'm having fun. Still working through it. Uh, you know, on on re listens, but at this stage in, in the game, it, the, the music's 
as less for me as as ever especially mm-hmm. now that i'm in like a, a stable relationship that's not gonna end it's like mm-hmm. ah man i i wish she would have broken up with me so i could really soak this in yeah but i i am very invested in the lore and everything that's i mean getting i mean my tiktok feed is full of people who analyze everything she does and i can't get enough of it. that's been my favorite part oh where do we fall on uh whose side taylor takes in the drake hendrick beef so there's a, a couple of different things so if i i because i was hoping that there'd be a path for drake because i i enjoy drake more than the other rappers in that uh, whole entanglement but it, it, I, I think that she would lean towards Kendrick's side. They did bad blood together, so they got history. And then Drake, I guess her, him and Taylor had like worked on a song together, but he got, uh, like he he like, he's kind of a micromanager. Like the, like, I don't know if you know the the Bobby Altoff thing where like she did a podcast with him, but mm-hmm. then she had to give him all the control of everything, and then he eventually took it down. So I I'd imagine there was some friction there with Taylor Swift when they were working together. And then in Drake's, uh, you know, diss track back to Kendrick, he was kind of clowning Kendrick for working with Taylor. So it, so the consensus is that she'd be on Team Kendrick, which is a bummer because, I mean, that's the losing side of this whole, whole riff. I don't know. I feel like Kendrick Lamar would set the entire trunk on, you know, Drake's entire trunk on fire. But, I mean, if you really believe that's the losing side... Um, I, I, mean, I yeah, who might disagree? Like writing, who might disagree? Like, this hypothetical question that we pose like, ourselves. Like, writing like soliloquies, I'd probably take Kendrick Lamar. But if they're <laughs> talking about like rap songs, then yeah, I mean, give me Drake. I just want to keep talking about nonsense for as long as possible to see how miserable Tyler gets by the end of it. I'm just not hip with the shits. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to get out of here. Thanks, guys, for hopping on a Saturday afternoon. I appreciate it. Do we have any final thoughts? Is there anything we haven't talked about yet you guys wanted to get to? Go the Nuggets. The Mets have won six in a row. They did just close the books on the Dodgers. So we took – hey, we took two out of three of the Dodgers at the very least. That's a big series. That's a big weekend series out in LA. Oh, I'm stoked about it. It goes tomorrow, so that's tough. I mean, you know, that's we've got our two. That's right. Well, as always, guys, we appreciate it. Um, You'll be listening to this on Sunday, April 21st. Just a reminder, Brandon and I will be live streaming the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft. If you're interested in watching, feel free to reach out. Uh, We're going to be post. We're going to figure out you know the logistics of that, where we're going to be streaming, where it's going to be live streamed, how you can watch it. Um, Keep everyone updated. Uh, As always, please go to our YouTube, like, subscribe. Cornhusker Connection. Brandon does a couple other podcasts. Tyler does a couple other podcasts on there. Brooke, you know, who's also in the room, he's been on the podcast a couple times. He's on a couple podcasts on there. Go like us, subscribe. We really love doing this on our own, but the more you guys like and subscribe, the more money we get to make eventually. So it's always nice. But for Brett Sprinkle, Tyler Sprinkle, and Brandon Shanahan, we are signing off. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. <laughs>